Hello there again and thanks for joining us and welcome to another Quick Techniques lesson. In this lesson we shall be showing you the steps in how to create a beautiful old sailing ship in oils. It is also the third and final step in our seascape oil painting where in the last lesson we learned how to create a realistic ocean. So let's draw up our ship. Now regarding our ship, I'm going to draw it up with thinned down medium grey oil paint. And this isn't as scary as it might sound because if you do make a boo-boo you can easily wipe it off. Failing that you can download the PDF here that can be found at montmart.net and you can draw it up with a marker like that. Now we can kind of put our ship wherever we like but rule of thumb states that the focal volume takes up about one third of the canvas and I like to not just plonk my ship in the middle of the canvas because it seems to frame it a bit obviously. It comes across a bit contrived so we're going to put it off to the left a little bit. So paying close attention to the PDF I lightly sketch in the rough outline and go over all the lines again but bolder. It is at this stage that I lay in any large blocks of tone as well and I roughly underpaint my masts and dry brush in any shading on the sails too. This shading on the sails adds shape and dimension when we scumble on our top coat there to take shape already. Hey, you could leave it at this stage if you like. It sort of looks like a ghost ship. Yep. Now we have our dark slate in, we can lay in our lights and balance out the tones. So onto your palette, lay out some titanium white, some phthalo, some yellow ochre, and a spot of vermilion. These four colours are all that's needed for the ship. So you can see that I'm laying my hand on here. We're starting at the top and working our way down so we don't destroy any of our work. This is all dry because it's had the terps mixed into the paint. So I'm just moving down and if you refer to the finished painted PDF you'll see that certain parts of each sail are different colours. So I'll just quickly go over this with you now. This front side here will mainly be white highlight. On this side it will be a little bit blue and on this side it will be a little bit yellow with the yellow ochre as will down here be. But you'll see what I mean so let's just keep going. This front highlight is important to get right so we portray that spherical billowing sail correctly. This side will be in light tinted blue to suggest reflected light. The other tinted ochre. So add a touch of blue to some titanium and scumble it in. Yes, scumble. It's an odd word, but it means scrubbing on a little amount of paint. Then onto the rest of the sail, we layer on pure titanium white. And into that, blend a little yellow ochre into the corner. And that's it, in a nutshell, really. Stand back and have a look at your sail. If you need to, you can balance it out by blending colours in here and there. Then move on to the next sail, and so on. The more round the sail, the more tonal variation there will be. You see the arctic blue and the highlighted layered up next to each other here? Now softly blend them. Then the yellow white scumbled in, and tints added, and the illusion is complete. With any realistic portrayal of a subject, the light source must be taken into account. So the sails behind the foremast will be in shadow. A little bit of white placed here and there changes this confusing clutter of grey tones into a jib sail, wrapped over a pulpit. I don't know how many people tell me every time I mix a colour, I get brown. Personally, I find a clean brown hard to mix. This one I mix from vermilion, ochre and phthalo. I then darken one side with phthalo and one side with ochre 
I now have three browns for the masts. Bear in mind the cylindrical nature of a mast. Again, there will be a dark edge and a highlight as well. The top length of timber was called a yard. I'm laying some whiting to suggest a rolled up sail. I paint the rest of the mast ochre blended with white. Slow growth Scots pine was the wood of choice for the masts of great sailing ships. Now the sails and rigging are done, we can start on the rest of our ship. So I squeeze out some white and I add a touch of ochre to tint it slightly. I then mix it thoroughly. The hull already has some tonal suggestion on. So I lay over an area very thinly so that dark grey underpainting is apparent. For the detail on the deck, I basically suggest elements and create complex interesting texture. Keep standing back from your work and add little bits here and there. I decide to add a bit of a bow wave to portray movement. Now that the main body of our sailing ship is in, we can add the details. And by the details, I mean things like the sheets and the ropes and things like that. And that adds a huge difference to the finished painting. Now for our ropes, you can't really beat a Montmartre fat liner. And I've talked about these before and why these are so good is you get these very stiff, fine Taclon filaments at the end and then we have a soft belly of squirrel hair and that acts like a reservoir and holds the paint so you can get long continuous lines. So let's lay these ropes in and make a nice wet mix of oil paint. The colour is a dark grey and when you add these ropes don't put the whole rope in. Leave the areas free of colour as that is how one would view these from a distance. You don't need every single rope either, just a few. Even though this is quite a realistic painting, I think it is important not to put in too much visual information. Just add what you need. A sailing ship like this would literally have hundreds of these rigging ropes. If we put them all in, we just confuse the viewer with superfluous detail. Lastly, we paint in a flowing red pendant. Yep. Well, that's our sailing ship finished and I'm really stoked with how it turned out. And on finishing a project like this, it reminds one of why we persevere with art because there is nothing like the feeling of creating something from nothing, from a blank canvas. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this series. From your emails, I know that quite a few of you are trying this project and I'd love to see them. So if you're not there now, then log on to montmart.net where we've got lots more lessons and we've got other great stuff like our blog, our Facebook and our family feed. So until next time, peace.